Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. Managing packages on your Linode instances is a very important skill to master. And that's why in this video, I'm going to give you some examples of package manager commands among three different distributions to get you started. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's get right into it. Here I have three tabs on my terminal. And inside each of these tabs, I have a sample distribution. So the first one is Debian. And then here I have Fedora. And then finally, Arch Linux. And there's plenty of other distributions out there on the Linode platform, but these are three really good examples because they're very popular distributions. So let's get started with Debian. And one thing to keep in mind is that the commands that I'm about to go over for Debian are the same in Ubuntu as well, because Ubuntu is actually forked from Debian. Debian uses the apt command for package management by default, same as Ubuntu. And there are several subcommands like apt install and then the name of a package. There's also things like apt update, apt dist hyphen upgrade, among others. So let's go over some of these so that you'll understand what they do. So the first working example that I'm going to give you is how you install a package. And what I'm going to use as an example in each of these distributions is Apache, a very popular web server application. Of course, we have other web servers that are popular as well. Nginx, even though it's a proxy application, it's also a web server. But it doesn't matter what you install. I'm just basically showing you how to manage packages. And another quick aside is that I'm not going to remind you to use sudo for each of these commands. I'm logged in as root on each of these Linodes, so I don't need to use sudo. But if you are logged in as a normal user account, and you should be because that's a very good idea, then you will need to use the sudo command to escalate your privileges accordingly or switch to the root account because all package management commands where they modify the system are going to require root or sudo privileges. So I'm going to leave sudo out in my case because again, I'm logged in as root, and that's the last time I'll mention that. Let's go ahead and get started. So with Debian, the first thing that we should do before we start managing packages is refresh the package repository index. And actually in most distributions, we have repositories which is basically where the packages are downloaded from. And new packages are added all the time. Perhaps there's security updates or feature updates. So what we should do before we start working with packages is just refresh the database. And on Debian, as well as Ubuntu, we can run apt update just like that. That's going to resynchronize with the repositories. So I'll press enter. And now that I've actually refreshed the repository index, we can see at the bottom, it's giving me a helpful notification that there are some packages that I can update. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and look at an example of installing a package. So what I'm going to do is run apt install, and then I could type the name of the package that I want to install. And in this case, I'm going to install a package named Apache 2. Now, something that you should know about Debian is that a lot of these commands are often written like this, apt hyphen git. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a little bit outdated. The hyphen git is no longer required because it's implied. So you could shorten it down to simply apt. And the ability to not need to type hyphen git is actually a new feature. So only newer versions of Debian are able to do this, but basically all supported versions of Debian are already supporting the simplified version of apt. And this is the way that we should use these commands going forward, simply typing apt instead of apt hyphen git. So I'll press enter. And what's going to happen right now is it's going to give me a list of the changes that need to be made in order to facilitate the requirements of what I'm asking for. I asked it to install the Apache 2 package, but it's installing quite a few more here. In fact, it's installing 12 packages rather than just the one that I asked for. And the reason why 
is because apt is smart. It knows that in order for it to install the Apache 2 package, Apache requires dependencies in order to function, so it's going to take care of all of that for me. The additional packages that are being installed are dependencies. For some reason or another, Apache requires those. Thankfully for me, I don't have to worry about that. In the past, we used to have to install each dependency one by one. It wasn't very fun. But with one command, I'm installing Apache and all the dependencies. That's pretty cool. Now what I could do is type Y and then enter to accept these changes and let it actually do what I'm asking it to do. I don't need to include the Y here because Y is capital, which means if I press enter without actually typing Y or N, it's going to assume Y. It's going to assume whichever option is capital. So I'll just press enter. And now I've successfully installed Apache. If I was setting up a web server, I could actually copy files to this Linode to serve as a website. But that's beyond the scope of this video. Again, it doesn't matter what we are installing. I just used Apache as an example. But what if I change my mind and I don't actually want Apache on this server? What I could do is type apt and then remove because I want to remove a package in this case. And what I want to do is remove the Apache package that I just installed. So I'll press enter. Then enter again. And now Apache is no longer installed on this Linode. But something interesting just happened. If you recall, when I installed Apache, it installed a bunch of other dependencies as well. But here it's saying there's one package to remove. So despite the fact that I installed multiple packages when I installed Apache 2, it's only actually removing Apache 2 and not the other ones that were installed as dependencies. In fact, we see them right here. It says the following packages were automatically installed and are no longer required. So it's not going to automatically remove the packages that it installed as dependencies. That's up to me. As an administrator, I need to actually make a decision on whether or not I really do want those packages to be removed. And it's going to be somewhat rare that you wouldn't want to remove those because they're just wasted space at this point. They were only installed as dependencies to satisfy the requirements for Apache, and now that Apache is gone, I no longer need them. So how do we clean up those orphaned packages? Thankfully, that's pretty easy to do. We could type apt auto remove, just like that, and then I'll press enter. And what this command is going to do is give me the opportunity to remove any packages that were installed as dependencies but are now no longer required because the reason why they were installed in the first place is no longer the case. So now they're orphans and apt auto remove is going to give me a chance to get those off my server to free up space. So I'm looking at it right now. I agree that these packages are not required. I'll press enter. And now those packages are removed as well. Now you saw in the output that there were some updates available. And as I'm sure you're probably aware, keeping your server up to date is very important. A lot of times those updates include security patches that are very important for the health of your server. So we definitely want to get those installed. And we have a dedicated apt command for that as well. We have apt upgrade. So I'm going to press enter and it's telling me that it wants to update those three packages right there. So I'll press enter. That's fine. I don't mind those being updated. And those are smaller packages, so it's already done. Now, what if you didn't know the name of the package that you wanted to install earlier? Maybe you already know that you want to install Apache, but you don't know what the Apache package is called on Debian. So how do you find that out? So maybe you started off like this. You ran apt install and then Apache, assuming that the name of the Apache package was Apache. So I'll press enter. And it's going to fail because there is no package named Apache. So what we could do is search for packages. So I'll type apt hyphen cache. Want to inspect the cache of apt packages. And what I want to do is search. And then I'll give it a keyword, something I want to search for. 
in this case Apache. I tried to install it, it didn't work, so what's the package actually called? Now we get a lot of output here because quite a few packages actually contain the word Apache in them. And what I could do is actually pipe that into more if I wanted to have the output pause so I can actually look at the results. I can just keep pressing enter here to scroll through and we already see that Apache 2 is right here. So that explains why I wasn't able to install it. The package is called Apache 2, not Apache. But we already knew that because I installed that package at the beginning of the video. And the apt cache command has other variants as well that I recommend you check out in the documentation page that is linked to this video. Now let's move on to Fedora. Fedora actually uses the DNF package manager, and it looks like that. And previously, Fedora used to use yum. CentOS also uses DNF, and earlier versions of CentOS, just like earlier versions of Fedora, used yum. Nowadays, all current CentOS and Fedora releases all use DNF. So that's what I'm going to go over in this video. Now let's search for a package. I'll type DNF and then search. And what I want to do is search for Apache. And I can give you a quick spoiler. The package name for Apache in CentOS and Fedora is not Apache and it's not Apache 2. So what is it then? And notice that it's actually refreshing the package repository index for me, which is pretty cool. I didn't have to do that manually like I did on Debian. But that also means the first package manager command that you use in that session is going to take a little bit longer, but that's okay. And I'll scroll up a bit here. And to save a little time, the package for Apache in CentOS and Fedora is called HTTPD, just like you see here. So now we know the name of the package that we want. How do we install it? Now, the syntax here isn't all that different from apt in the previous example. We can install a package by running DNF and then install. That's the keyword that we want to use. We're telling DNF what exactly we want to do. And then the package that we want to install is HTTPD. So there's the command to install a package in CentOS and Fedora right there. And just like with Debian, there's going to be some dependencies here. That's okay. The Y is lowercase in this example, so I do need to type Y and then press enter in order to accept the proposed changes that you see here. And the first time you run a DNF command on a CentOS or Fedora system, you might see output like this. I'll just accept this. It's just asking me if I'm sure that I want to download software from this repository, and I do, so I will just type Y and then press Enter. And now Apache is installed. And if I wanted to remove Apache, then what I would do is type DNF and then remove, and then the name of the package. So there's the command right there to remove a package on Fedora and CentOS. And what's really cool here is that it's going to go ahead and remove the unused dependencies as well, which is cool because that's yet another thing that we don't have to do manually. So I'll accept the changes. I approve of this. And now Apache has been removed. And what if I wanted to update all the packages on my server? Well, that's pretty easy. DNF upgrade is the command that we are looking for. So that's pretty straightforward. I'll press enter. And we have quite a few packages here to update. 110 are going to be updated and five are going to be installed. And we have a total of 281 megabytes. So I'll press Y and then enter. All right, there we go. All the packages on this Fedora Linode have been updated. I should probably reboot it to make sure that I take advantage of all the security patches that are no doubt included in these packages, but this is just a demo server, so I don't really care about that right now. But you did just see how to use the DNF command to manage packages on a Fedora and CentOS system. 
And the documentation page that is linked to this video has even more examples, including a template that you can use to create your very own repository. Now let's move on to Arch Linux. And the name of the package manager in Arch Linux is my favorite name for any package manager. It's Pacman. Just like that. And yeah, that's short for package manager, but I really like it because I'm also a fan of retro games and Pac-Man is just a cool name for a package manager. And just like Debian with apt, we can refresh the package database because just like all the other distributions that I've gone over, Arch Linux uses repositories as well. And every now and then you do have to refresh that. And to do so, we will use a capital S, so hyphen capital S and then Y. And I'll press enter. And that was super fast. So now the package repository index for this Arch Linux Linode has been updated. And similar to the other distributions, what I want to do right now is search for the Apache package. I want to find out what it's actually called. And to search with Pac-Man, we type Pac-Man, of course, and then dash capital S. And then we add a lowercase s right next to it. And then after that, we include a search term, something that we want to search for. And I'll type in Apache for that. I'll scroll up a little bit. And here we have Apache. And that's actually the package name. It's simply Apache. Couldn't be easier. So now that we know the name of the package, how do we install it? So what we're going to do is type Pacman dash capital S and the single capital S by itself just tells Pacman we want to install something. And what I want to install is, of course, Apache. There's just a few dependencies here, not very many. And Y is in caps, so I'll press enter to install Apache. And it's already done. It was actually that fast. And if I wanted to remove that package, I'll just change the dash capital S to a dash capital R, R for remove. I'll remove the package. And now Apache has been uninstalled. But what about those dependencies? If I run the pacman command along with the options dash capital Q and then DT and press enter, what it's going to do is list the packages that are orphans. It's not going to ask me if I want to remove them, but it is going to list them so I at least know that this package right here is not required. So what I could do is run pacman dash capital R and then the name of the package APR hyphen util. I'll press enter. Now that's gone. Then I could run the previous command to check for dependencies that are no longer required. We have another one. So we had a dependency of a dependency actually. So I'm going to remove that too. And now it's gone. So basically you can just keep repeating that command until there's no more orphans left and you've successfully cleaned up your server. Now there's other examples on the documentation page for this video that'll give you even more variations of the Pac-Man command. So if you want to learn even more, feel free to check out that article. So there you go. You just saw examples of package management commands among three different distributions. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, make sure you click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. We have some awesome content coming very soon, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.